his name. What do you want to do tonight? Same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. Faith is the head chemist of the mind. When faith is blended with the vibration of thought, the subconscious mind instantly picks up the vibration, translates it into its spiritual equivalent, and then transmits it to infinite intelligence, as in the case of prayer. The emotions of faith, love, and sex are the most powerful of all of the major positive emotions. When the three are blended, they have the effect of coloring the vibration of thought in such a way that it instantly reaches the subconscious mind where it is changed into its spiritual equivalent, the only form that induces a response from infinite intelligence. Love and faith are psychic, related to the spiritual side of man. Sex is purely biological and related only to the physical. The mixing or blending of these three emotions has the effect of opening a direct line of communication between the finite thinking mind of man and the infinite intelligence. How to develop faith? Well, there comes now a statement which will give a better understanding of the importance of the principle of auto-suggestion and assumes in the transmutation of desire into its physical or monetary equivalent, namely that faith is a state of mind which may be induced or created by affirmation or repeated instructions to the subconscious mind through the principle of auto-suggestion. You may convince the subconscious mind that you believe you will receive that for which you ask, and it will act upon that belief which your subconscious mind passes back to you in the form of faith followed by definite plans for procuring that which you desire. The method by which one develops faith where it does not already exist is extremely difficult to describe, almost as difficult in fact as it would be to describe the color of red to a blind man who has never seen color and has nothing with which to compare what you describe to him. Repetition of affirmation of orders to your subconscious mind is the only known method of voluntary development of the emotion of faith. Perhaps the meaning may be made clearer through the following explanation as to the way men sometimes become criminals. Stated in the words of a famous criminologist, when men first come into contact with crime, they abhor it. If they remain in contact with crime for a long time, they become accustomed to it and endure it. If they remain in contact with it long enough, they finally embrace it and become influenced by it. This is the equivalent of saying that any impulse of thought which is repeatedly passed on to the subconscious mind is finally accepted and acted upon by the subconscious mind which proceeds to translate that impulse into its physical equivalent by the most practical procedure available. In connection with this, consider again the statement, all thoughts which have been emotionalized and mixed with faith begin immediately to translate themselves into their physical equivalent or counterpart. The emotions or the feeling portion of thoughts are the factors which give thoughts vitality, life and action. The emotions of faith, love and sex, when mixed with any thought impulse, give it greater action than any of these emotions can do singly. Not only thought impulses which have been mixed with faith, but those which have been mixed with any of the positive emotions or any of the negative emotions may reach and influence the subconscious mind. From this statement you'll understand that the subconscious mind will translate into its physical equivalent a thought impulse of a negative or destructive nature, just as readily as it will act upon thought impulses of a positive or constructive nature. This accounts for the strange phenomenon which so many millions of people experience, referred to as misfortune or bad luck. There are millions of people who believe themselves doomed to poverty and failure because of some strange force over which they believe they have no control. They are the creators of their own misfortunes. Because of this negative belief which is picked up by the subconscious mind and translated into its physical equivalent. This is an appropriate place in which to suggest again that you may benefit by passing on to your subconscious mind 
any desire which you wish translated into its physical or monetary equivalent in a state of expectancy or belief that the transmutation will actually take place. Your belief or faith is the element which determines the action of your subconscious mind. There is nothing to hinder you from deceiving your subconscious mind when giving it instructions through auto-suggestion as I have deceived my own son's subconscious mind. To make this deceit more realistic, conduct yourself just as you would if you were already in possession of the material thing which you are demanding when you call upon your subconscious mind. The subconscious mind will transmute into its physical equivalent by the most direct and practical media available, any order which is given to it in a state of belief or faith that the order will be carried out. Surely enough has been stated to give a starting point from which one may, through experiment and practice, acquire the ability to mix faith with any order given to the subconscious mind. Perfection will come through practice. It cannot come by merely reading instructions. If it be true that one may become a criminal by association with crime, and this is a known fact, it is equally true that one may develop faith by voluntarily suggesting to the subconscious mind that one has faith. The mind comes finally to take on the nature of the influences which dominate it. Understand this truth and you will know why it is essential for you to encourage the positive emotions as dominating forces of your mind and discourage and eliminate negative emotions. A mind dominated by positive emotions becomes a favorable abode for the state of mind known as faith. A mind so dominated may at will give the subconscious mind instructions which it will accept and act upon immediately. Faith is a state of mind which may be induced by auto-suggestion. All down the ages the religionists have admonished struggling humanity to have faith in this, that, and other dogma or creed, but they have failed to tell people how to have faith. They have not stated that faith is a state of mind and that it may be induced by self-suggestion. In language which any normal human being can understand, we will describe all that is known about the principle through which faith may be developed where it does not already exist. Have faith in yourself, faith in the infinite. Before we begin, you should be reminded once again that faith is the eternal elixir which gives life, power, and action to the impulse of thought. The foregoing sentence is worth reading a second time and a third and a fourth. It is worth reading aloud. Faith is the starting point of all accumulation of riches. Faith is the basis of all miracles and all mysteries which cannot be analyzed by the rules of science. Faith is the only known antidote for failure. Faith is the element, the chemical, which, when mixed with prayer, gives one direct communication with infinite intelligence. Faith is the element which transforms the ordinary vibration of thought created by the finite mind of man into the spiritual equivalent. Faith is the only agency through which the cosmic force of infinite intelligence can be harnessed and used by men. Every one of the foregoing statements is capable of proof. The proof is simple and easily demonstrated. It is wrapped up in the principle of auto-suggestion. Let us center our attention, therefore, upon the subject of self-suggestion and find out what it is and what it is capable of achieving. It's a well-known fact that one comes finally to believe whatever one repeats to oneself, whether the statement be true or false. If a man repeats a lie over and over, he will eventually accept the lie as truth. Moreover, he will believe it to be the truth. Every man is what he is because of the dominating thoughts which he permits to occupy his mind. Thoughts which a man deliberately places in his own mind and encourages with sympathy and with which he mixes any one or more of the emotions constitutes the motivating forces which direct and control his every movement, act, and deed. Comes now a very significant statement of truth. Thoughts which are mixed with any of the feelings of emotions constitute a magnetic force which attracts from the vibrations of the ether other similar or related thoughts. 
A thought thus magnetized with emotion may be compared to a seed which, when planted in fertile soil, germinates, grows, and multiplies itself over and over again until that which was originally one small seed becomes countless millions of seed of the same brand.